My great-grandfather, Andrew G. Montgomery, came to uh, Dorset in uh, 1897. Came from Brantford, Ontario, and came to the Port Cunnington Lodge, and that was his first taste of Lake of Bays. At a later date, he and his son, Andrew H., my grandfather, uh, came again to uh, Dorset. They stayed at to Fox Point, they stayed at Port Cunnington. They actually paddled or rowed a boat from Fox Point down to our point, which opens onto the major part of uh, Lake of Bays. And that was probably in uh, 1917. And by 1919, they purchased the property that we are fortunate to uh, enjoy. And it was 26 uh, lots uh, plus a bay and a probably, probably 3,000 feet of uh, shoreland with maybe 110 acres. Purchased, uh, I always understood from the Crown, for less than $2,000. So it's my understanding it, um, this was initially part of a logging road that went around the shore and then when you get to um, Styx's Point, it goes over the hill to Point Ideal. So there's an old um, logging road back there. And I think the first piece of construction was the dock and that was done in uh, 1922 and shortly after that the double-deck boathouse, which right now you, you cannot build a, a, a double-deck boathouse on the uh, lake. What now is the bunkhouse was the uh, honeymoon cottage. That was built uh, behind the boathouse, and I think that's where my uh, parents stayed when they got married in uh, 1934 when they came up on their, their honeymoon. The gazebo that's out on the point was the cooking uh, area, and that was also behind the boathouse. So basically, the living quarters were the dock, the boathouse, probably 25 or so, the main cottage that we're talking from here was built by uh, Bill Boothby. Apparently my father and his brother were a little on the noisy side, so my grandparents felt they better add an annex so they can get some peace and quiet. When my grandparents first started coming up here, uh, their first few trips, they would take the train from Niagara Falls to Toronto and then take from, uh, the train from Toronto um, up to Huntsville, and then they took a boat out and then took the train across and then took a steamship into Port Cunnington. And that was the way that the tourists, I guess, would come. There were no roads uh, come, coming to the Montgomery property probably until the late 30s, uh, early 40s. My first memory of coming by car was probably in 1946 with a, um, the Soda Suburban that had the flip up back seat for nine people. My sister Claire would generally be in the uh, back seat. I'd be up front with my uh, dad and mother. Uh, my brother and my other sister would be in the uh, middle seat, possibly at times with our grandmother. The way my, my grandparents stayed at Port Cunnington during the war, they would come up with my mom and her sister. My grandparents really wanted to purchase up here and Charlie Cunnington um, and Winnie Cunnington, they knew that A.H. Montgomery had some properties down here in a building, and so they brought them down here. I understood in a wagon, because it was a long way at the time, although only three kilometers now, um, but it was a long way through the woods, and met A.H. Montgomery, and it's my understanding that um, A.H. Montgomery liked my grandfather. The final purchase was done in 1949-1950. At that time, the next door neighbors, it was Jack and Muriel Slatter, and they had already built. Um, so A.H. Montgomery had sold the property next to us to them, and they had already built a very small um, cottage also. And my grandparents were very good friends with the Slatters, and um, a. H. Montgomery and his wife, and they would all play cribbage and cards and bridge um, in the evenings. And I would be sitting in what would be the little, you know, 10 by 10 living room and kitchen area um, at the time. So they had no hydro. It was, they, they only came for three weeks, so I can understand why. <laughs> fireplace uh, was built by the same person that built the two fireplaces at the big one. Apparently there was a problem uh, with the uh, fireplace when they put the first fire in that smoke was coming out all over the place. Well apparently the builder forgot to put in a flue and that got corrected but this uh, fireplace is uh, 
been here forever. There's some other items around here. There's a, a Victrola. We can still play some uh, records on that. We have all the original coal oil lamps um, that we keep out and we use. Uh, there was a, an ice box and a wood stove. There was an outhouse. And we have one of the old big wash basins that um, they used to use. From my early days here, or even my grandfather, there was no electricity, there was no running water, there was no nothing. And wash day would be an old tub, many of you probably remember orange those, those tub. tub, orange tub, with a big wheel, with the three prongs that would stir it all up. Uh, then you'd have to put it through the ringer to dry it out, and of but course... But first you had to pump the water from the lake. Oh, that's right. Another experience was the acetylene. I imagine your house having flames inside it for your light. Carbide and water mixture, so you had flames in every, every room if you wanted to have uh, any, any light. When you would go in to get ice, there was just like maybe 18, 20 inches or so, and then you would climb up into the, into the loft, which was filled with sawdust and ice and you dig around for the next piece of ice. That was brought out and um, washed off and then you'd have to um, chip away to make sure that it would fit into the ice box. And I still call refrigerators ice boxes. When my grandparents were still staying at Port Cunnington Lodge, um, it was in the 40s and my mother was still in high school and she was just finishing high school. My aunt was four years younger. And so when she finished high school, that high school year, um, it was like 48, 49. Uh, that's when they were just looking here to purchase and they'd been staying here for one summer and still staying at Port Cunnington. And my mother had finished high school and they asked her to stay to be the school teacher at Port Cunnington School, which is now the community center. And my grandfather thought that would be a fantastic experience for her. She never considered it. I do, um, my grandparents apparently wanted her to spend an extra year um, before she went off to university. Life jackets back in the uh, 50s, you know, basically forget them, but anyhow, you, you were required to wear some kind of bubble on your back, and until you could swim the length of our dock, uh, you were required to have a life jacket, and we've adhered that policy even today with the younger uh, grandchildren, stuff like that, that you cannot be on the dock without a life jacket unless you've been able to demonstrate you can swim from one end of the uh, dock to the other end of the dock. We used to go out in Flatty, which was built in 1943. And my grandfather and I used to go out in Flatty Run, and we would go over towards Millishamps Island, which at that time was called McDonald's Island. He had this special place, you know, and sometimes we would we'd catch some bass and stuff like that. But whenever we caught one, he would put an X in the water so we would remember where we caught the fish. <laughs> Bird dancing was the thing to do in the uh, uh, 50s. Yeah, think of the Golden Slipper, which was uh, owned by uh, uh, Roy Boothby, was the place that you went every Wednesday night for uh, square dancing. And uh, they had their, their band with the Cunningtons and the people doing their, their horns and their strumming and what have you. And the calling was done. So you knew all the square dances and it was just uh, all in, the locals, of, it, it was the place you were together on Wednesday. Friday night, you'd go to Barnes in uh, Haystack Bay and uh, enjoy square dancing there. And then I think there was some square dancing on the south shore of uh, Lake of Bays. And we'd chase, we'd chase the square dancing uh, around quite a bit. Lots of music and lots of dancing and lots of fun, right? Uh, but regattas were a big deal. The church had a, its own regatta, which would be uh, sponsored by the Anglican Church, involving Point Ideal when they had regular tourists, Fort Cunnington, Fox Point, Bondi, and Lumina would all compete. And uh, we would typically go in for uh, 
Fort Cunnington, and those were uh, great ones. Then we go over to Big One, and uh, I know, I, in my case, I did uh, maybe some tilting, but the, the war canoe was uh, the big event that we would get into. If you've ever been the start of a four-bladed canoe, talk about tension and jockeying for position and stabbing your paddle and doing all this sort of stuff. So you're listening for the gun and then you've got to line up and there's usually about 30 or 40 canoes. That's a lot. So anyway, we're in this mess of everything and we're all gunned up to go. The gun goes off and Andy's starting to say, stroke, stroke, stroke. And then uh, I just know I've got to keep my head down and I've got to stroke because I'm the skinny little guy but I've got to keep up with these guys, stroke and everything else. We're halfway through and Andy says, you guys were winning, stroke you SOB, stroke you SOB. So all we heard Andy say, stroke you SOB, stroke. And we just kept the head down and I, we're all grunting and everything else and we win. It was absolutely amazing, we won. It was amazing, and everybody cheered, and this, and the other, these old guys had won, and all <laughs> You know, we'd have flags and headbands and all sorts of things that we always had to win. We usually didn't, because Lumina always had a good, strong team. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was a, it truly is a community. Port Cunnington is a beautiful little community. Uh, to this day, we go to bingo every Thursday night in the summer, and. My daughter does the callback for numbers and I'll call bingo and all my kids are now calling bingo. I don't know who the band was. I know that um, my mother had them over here. They, they would have parties over here and then they'd bring, bring their equipment over and they would play their music here, um, which was a little, you know, unheard of uh, to be having that type of party. But, so, Choo Choo Valley was there, I believe, when my aunt was working. The parties at Big One were big. Old story, whether it's true or not, we don't know, because my, my aunt would say she would never do such a thing. Um, but there are other accounts that she did have the whole Big One staff swim across um, after work one night, and there was a huge party, and then none of them made it back to work the next day. This is the 100th anniversary of Montgomery Point, and I'm very tickled to be part of this family for the last 54 years. And I really discovered right away that the doc was a fantastic fisherman, and he knew everything around here. The doc is keen about uh, putting some money in something, whether why don't we start a charitable uh, foundation where people can donate money. A motion was passed that a committee should be formed to start a program, a heritage type of program, and people came out of the woodwork to help it happen. I think that's really what's important. The community uh, and the, se the seed idea of Dr. Montgomery and what came out of this Montgomery Point for, for this organization is uh, really quite marvelous. Development was really changing. Uh, when the fireboat was uh, sort of became an idea uh, and there was a lot of fundraising Port Kennington area did a lot of fundraising fire department doing all the fireworks in Dwight and um, fundraising for the fireboat uh, it, it was just a long process to, to have it come to be and it's really important to have on the lake and we see it often going flying somewhere and, um, you know okay, we're glad we have it, is just such an important part of um, Lake Bays and keeping us safe. The, this is grounding for my kids. This is where they feel most grounded. Um, we've lived in Toronto and now Waterloo. I think all three of them would say this is where they feel um, is home. Uh, this is where I'm most comfortable. This is where I have my lifelong friends. This is where I, I belong in a community. Um, and I go way back, I, you know, there are so many people that I've known my entire life. The history hanging up on the, uh, the walls. The Montgomery Point is, uh, is a special deal for the Montgomery family.